thanks, thanksgiving. And I want to remind us about a couple of things, if, if you will allow it. And that is that God is the focus of thanksgiving. That is, uh, this is an opportunity for us to literally give praise to God and to express gratitude to God. And I feel as though every one of us owes God gratitude. Does that, does that make sense for us here today? And I think that praising God and testifying to God and testifying before others of God's goodness is something that we're owed. Most of us, myself personally included, are not comfortable speaking in public. Uh, in other words, to stand up and to say something. For most of us, is something that you know, we're not comfortable for. But I think that testifying of God's goodness publicly is something that we ought to at least feel obliged or willing to do. Does that make sense? So I'm going to open up in just a couple of minutes. We're going to discuss, we're going to talk about Thanksgiving just a little bit, and then I'm going to open up for you to express gratitude to God publicly. That's really what our service today is, is an opportunity to say, I'm thankful to God for, and if you would just be thinking of something succinct, to share that you're thankful for. To say, I'm thankful to God for, and express that. You know, it's really interesting, uh, as we've been studying through 1 Corinthians, uh, when someone prophesies, and they share something by way of prophecy, if someone else has the same message, the Bible says, let them hold their peace. So if somebody shares something that you're going to share that you're grateful for, give a hearty amen. Just say, amen. And uh, you might be... <laughs> you, you, uh, you might feel as though I was going to say the same thing. So don't feel as though, you know, there's a rule. Everybody here has to thank God for something or say something. No, it could be that one person expresses on behalf of many really what you feel in your heart toward God. But let's talk to God a little bit here just a little bit, and let's, let's praise Him. I'd like to read uh, the text Psalm 100 for you very, very briefly. Uh, you know, one of the common themes... Of the Psalms, if, if you want to look it up in your Bible, uh, it's right about in the middle of your Bible, maybe a little bit to the left of the middle. But I'd like to read Psalm 100 because it expresses one of the thanksgiving as one of the themes of Psalm. And I'll just begin reading in verse 1. And I'm not particularly concerned that you actually see the words as we read along, but if you'll listen, I think it'll be a help. And, and we want to just listen to what David said in this Psalm of Praise. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. So it's appropriate, isn't it, for us to sing as we praise the Lord here. Know ye the Lord, He is God. It is He that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. So there, here is an acknowledgement. God made me. I'm not my own. I'm created by God for His purpose. And then verse 4, Enter into His gates with thanksgiving and into His courts with praise. Be thankful unto Him and bless His name. This is the way I feel about it. Entering into His gates. Whose gates? God's gates. This afternoon, we want to, before we enjoy uh, our time of fellowship and pie, we want to come before God. Walk right into His presence. We have more ability to do this than even the psalmist David's generation did. Because we're able to go boldly into the throne of grace and obtain mercy. Do you know it's nice sometimes to come into God's presence just to be there? Have you ever been invited somewhere, a guest for a dinner, or a guest to somebody's home? Ever, somebody ever invited you and said, come to my place? What is the first thing you're asked, or you ask when you're asked to dinner, right? So say you're invited to someone's place for dinner. What's the first question you ask? Should I bring anything? Yeah, what should I bring? What should I bring? And so right now, we just want to take this day and just say, Created beings. He made us. We are created by Him for His pleasure. But we're actually invited. Come into His presence. 
literally that's what our little meeting here is, our praise time today is. Let's go into the presence of God. What should we bring Him? Let's offer Him. It's interesting. One of the contexts that Thanksgiving is in is in the context of offering or Thanksgiving is offered by us. Let's take a little bit of time. Let's, let's uh, be as, as somber as the moment requires. But in just a minute, I want to, us to be able to just go into God's presence, into His courts, if you will. If you can just in your mind imagine this is the court of God. We're going to go right into His presence collectively as a group, and we're going to offer Him our gratitude, our thanksgiving. We're going to say, God, I'm thankful for. And just tell God that. Okay, so now, you don't necessarily need to tell us. I would like us today, this is maybe a little bit different, a little awkward for us to do it in front of each other, but I would like us to say, God, I'm thankful for. Instead of just saying to us, I'm thankful for, let's tell God. God, I'm thankful for. Okay, if you'll think of that, and it'll just just take a second to do that. While you prepare for that, while you think about that, so you can just head off on that little excursion <laughs> in your mind, if you will. But I would like to just discuss Thanksgiving and uh, the uniqueness of it in our nation. It's trite, it's cute, and I'll acknowledge it doesn't offend me when we call Thanksgiving Turkey Day. Right? How many of you Turkey Day? We think Thanksgiving, we think food, we think football, right? Normally. Um, a lot of families have Thanksgiving traditions. And I don't have any objection to it at all. You know, the pause, the day for Thanksgiving, is a fantastic thing. I think just the fact that it's a disruption in our lives and our schedules that reminds us this is special, this is something. That's a good thing. But man, to do it without thanking misses everything that has to do with its purpose. We want to have a good Thanksgiving, don't we? Hey, touch football, turn into tackle like it always does. Uh, turkey, pie. I mean, come on. <laughs> What's not to like? But the reality of it is, is that the purpose is thanking. Thanksgiving. Okay, so I, I want to just do this. I, I could spend some time going over the history of Thanksgiving in the, in the United States. It is uh, most nations, many nations have a Thanksgiving holiday, but it is something that is unique to the foundation of our country that from the very beginning, the founding fathers of our nation acknowledged providence, that is that God provided. The word providence, it, it carries with the idea God provided. And when the colonists who came to the New England area of the United States, when they came and against insurmountable odds, some of them survived. They just said, man, we ought to be thankful. About three years after the first real Thanksgiving meeting, uh, or the first Thanksgiving, there was a real national, or well, really a colony Thanksgiving, where the what we call the Pilgrims and the Indians got together. William Bradford wrote uh, the proclamation for that Thanksgiving. And that was the first Thanksgiving in the United States. But Thanksgiving became something uniquely American right after we had our war for independence. Or not our war for, yeah, right after the war for independence. The first three presidents of the United States, George Washington, John Adams, and uh, James Monroe, each of them, one of the first things, did I, John, Thomas, yeah, no, it wasn't Jefferson, the first four, three of the first four, I should say. I don't believe Jefferson made a Thanksgiving proclamation, as far as I'm aware. But three of the first four presidents of the United States, one of the major proclamations they made was a proclamation for Thanksgiving. It really was the literal first, the first thing that George Washington signed. And so I'd like to, if you'll permit, I'd like to read, uh, I'd like to read Governor Bradford's thanks proclamation to the Massachusetts colony. And then, if you'll permit as well, I'd like to uh, look at uh, George Washington's. Abraham Lincoln's is my favorite. I normally read that, but hey, you got to come back next year. Or you can read it yourself. Okay? Uh, this is by Governor Bradford. 
Inasmuch as the Great Father has given us this year an abundant harvest of Indian corn, wheat, peas, beans, squashes, and garden vegetables, and has made the forest to abound with game and the sea with fish and clams, and inasmuch as he has protected us from the ravages of the savages, has spared us from pestilence and disease, has granted us freedom to worship God according to the dictates of our own conscience. Provision of food, protection from danger, and freedom to worship. Do we have those? Okay, so we can relate, can't we? Now I, your magistrate, do proclaim that all ye pilgrims, with your wives and ye little ones, do gather in ye meeting house on ye hill between the hours of 9 and 12 in the daytime on Thursday, November 29th of the year of our Lord, 1,623, and the third year since ye pilgrims landed on ye pilgrim rock, there to listen to ye pastor and render thanksgiving to ye almighty God for all his blessings. Ha. Ah. Where did they thank God at? Bradford said, go to church and give thanks. And so this is a great place to be for what we're doing here today, isn't it? Uh, I just, I love it that that was the year 1623, and it is the year 2018. And we're getting to do the very same thing that the pilgrims did. Albeit, Thursday would be a more appropriate day, but you can come Thursday night and give thanks if you'd like. Okay. Uh, Here's George Washington's proclamation. By the President of the United States of America, a proclamation. Whereas it is the duty of all nations to acknowledge the providence of Almighty God, to obey His will, to be grateful for His benefits, and humbly to implore His protection and favor. And whereas both houses of Congress have by their joint committee requested me to recommend to the people of the United States a day of public thanksgiving and prayer to be observed by acknowledging with grateful hearts the many signal favors of Almighty God, especially by affording them an opportunity peaceably to establish a form of government for their safety and happiness. Now, pause here for a minute. Those in Congress who opposed but were overruled this this proclamation objected that maybe the people wouldn't like the form of government which was given them or by which they were able to establish safety and happiness. It's been a good one. It's been the best the world's ever seen. Now therefore I do recommend an assigned Thursday, the 26th day of November next, to be devoted by the people of these states to the service of that great and glorious being who is the beneficent author of all the good that was, that is, or that will be, that we may then all unite in rendering unto him our sincere and humble thanks for his kind care and protection of the people of this country previous to their becoming a nation, for the signal and manifold mercies and the favorable interpositions of his providence which we experienced in the course and conclusion of the Great War. For the great degree of tranquility, union, and plenty which we have since enjoyed. For the peaceable and rational manner in which we have been enabled to establish constitutions of government for our safety and happiness. And particularly, the, the national uh, one now lately instituted for the civil and the religious liberty with which we are blessed, and the means we have of acquiring and diffusing useful knowledge, and in general for all the great and various favors which he hath been pleased to confer upon us. And also that we may then unite in most humbly offering our prayers and supplications to the great Lord and ruler of nations, and beseech him to pardon our nation and other tra our national and other transgressions. Hey, we're not perfect, never were. To enable us all, whether in public or private stations, to perform our several and relative duties properly and punctually. To render our national government a blessing to all the people by constantly being a government of wise, just, and constitutional laws. 
discreetly and faithfully executed and obeyed, to protect and guide all sovereigns and nations, especially such as have shown kindness unto us, and to bless them with good government, peace, and concord, to promote the knowledge and practice of true religion and virtue, and the increase of science among them and us, and generally to grant unto all mankind such a degree of temporal prosperity as he alone knows to be best. Given under my hand at the city of New York, the third day of October, in the year of our Lord, 1789, G. Washington. And that is the first president of the United States. Again, we're not here today to lament what isn't or what could be. We acknowledge those things in our gratitude. What we're here today for is to say, we've got it good. And we need to thank God. So now we'll open up uh, in, uh, just for the period of time that it takes uh, for us as individuals to just offer gratitude. Feel free to raise your hand or stand up. Try to speak loudly enough that everyone can hear you. And again, don't feel obligated, but if someone mentions the thing for which you would thank God, say, God, I thank you for, and then give a hearty amen when somebody gives yours if that happens. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll begin thanking God. Tashi. I, I thank God for the uh, Bible preaching church family that he's introduced me to, which is you guys, and, uh, and all the grace and love that you guys give to me and my family. Amen. Amen. Well, now let's be dismissed. Yeah, God, thank you. All right, who else? Giovanni. So, I mean, I have a lot of things. I actually want to thank God for this church. I want to thank God for our pastor, the amazing leaders that we have. You know, that makes a lot of things easier. <laughs> I want to thank God for my friends. You know, it, it's great. It's great to have good friends that are going in the same direction as you. <laughs> um, thank God for you. Yeah, so and I, I want to thank God for the people that he put in my life to surround myself with the, the different mentors that I have that teach me for the information that I get and the knowledge that I obtain and I, and I thank for the future blessings that he's going to give me. So, yeah. Thank God. Who else? Lee? I'm thankful to God for knowing the God that we can know the God to be thankful to. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people, you know, you mentioned Turkey Day, you know, that's all it is to some people is the food and the you know a special day in that respect but it's a special day to us because we get to thank god we get to know who he is and we can know who he is and we can thank him for things um, i'm thankful for my wife and how much of a help she is to me i'm thankful for my children and uh, the opportunity that is there with them i'm thankful for their health and you know i think of susanna but really it's all of my children you know, uh, all of our life, it's it's a vapor. It can be taken at any moment. And uh, so I'm thankful for the health that we have. And uh, I won't repeat it. I'm thankful for my church. <laughs> Anthony. Uh, thank God for giving me a place to live, for giving me power, for me to gospel, clothes, and uh, yeah, that's it. Amen. I am thankful for God for the experience and knowledge I gained this year. I am thankful for my family and my loving wife. I'm thankful for my father who has taught me the things I need to earn on my way to success. I am thankful for my friends and I'm thankful for my car also because without my car I couldn't get to places. So yeah. <laughs> Thank you God. Andrew. I'm thankful for the, uh, for, the sim for the simplicity of the gospel. It, it, you know, the gospel could be could, 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 God could have made the gospel could have had the gospel any way He wanted it to. He could have made it as hard as possible for any of us to ever get saved, but yet He made it so simple, so easy. And the fact that He was willing to send His only Son to die for us. It's, it's 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 simply amazing, and the fact that he just made it that if we if we place our trust in him, 
that we can receive him. I'm thankful for it. I'm very thankful for that. Chuck? I'm thankful for my family God has given me. I'm thankful for the opportunities I have to serve the Lord. And uh, I thank the Lord for Christian friends as well as brothers and sisters in Christ. And I'm thankful for uh, all the things God has given me uh, that help me to be a blessing to others. Amen. Thank you, God. Josiah. And thank God that we have the chance to get saved. He, he could have just not allowed any of us to go to heaven. He just made us all go to hell because we are sinners. So I thank God for the chance to get saved. Yeah, thank God that we could be saved. Tony. Um, I just want to second Andrews on that, just the gospel and that Jesus came and died for us and that, like, you know, just life where, that God gave us life and that he loved us and that, and that he made it so simple for us to just choose him and his mercy and grace and no matter how, no matter how many times we screw up that he just takes us back and is just loving and forgiving is the perfect example, the perfect person. Jesus was, and just, I mean, what's there not to be thankful for? Besides family and church and friends and everything, it's just life and grace and mercy and Jesus. Magic. brought me through uh, hard things, put a smile on my face when uh, I was depressed most of my life. It's yeah. good. Say that again. <laughs> Last phrase. But I was depressed most of my life. It put a smile on my face when I was depressed most of my life. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. Amen. Isn't that something to tell people about? Listen. Thank God for so many things. I thank Him for the Bible, what He did to give us His Word, and then for the people that He put along all these years that helped to keep the Word um, and then get it into English. I thank you for all the people that died trying to get the Bible into English and get it to us so we can know it because really our country was started because of that, people getting God's Word into their hand and their language. And then wanting to just serve God as He is. I thank for all those people I don't even know. And then for this great country that I get to live in where I could hear God's word preach when we meet like this today. And I thank God for um, you know, the fact that we can, the, His purpose of a church. You know, that I didn't just get saved, but that He left us here to do a mission and the Great Commission. I'm thankful for it. I'm thankful for the Holy Spirit because there's absolutely no way to do the Great Commission without the power of God. So it's just wonderful to have a purpose to be alive. And I thank God for that. And I thank Him so much for putting a burden on us, but for not just one person. God ever gives a burden to just one person. He puts it on others. And the whites and the dark birds have that. He just, this year in particular, is such a huge thing for us to be grateful for. I'm thankful for them. Thankful for Nancy and her family that God gave us. We've been praying God gave us a family and His children and His church. And I just thank God for answering prayer. Tony? Oh, I just want to add to Patty's because she got me thinking, but it's just the, the purpose of life. Because, you know, like when I was, she's talking about how she was depressed. 
Um, I was like that too. I, I looked at everything in life and thought like, what's the purpose? If there's no, if you just die and go in the ground, like what's the meaning? It doesn't matter if you achieve, you know, the greatest things if you just die. But um, so when God finally revealed himself and gave a purpose and meaning and showed like there's a reason to life and saved me from hell and condemnation, it's, it's like the verse that says all their life were in fear and uh, bondage loosely misquoting, but, um, you know, fear of death. And when I got saved and understood uh, eternal security, the fear of death went away. Like, you know, I don't want to die, but I'm ready. <laughs> I'm thankful for all the trials God gives us. Amen. She said all the trials that God's given us. Amen. Boy, that's one of the things we're supposed to be thankful in. That's good. Yeah. I'm thankful for this service today. Wasn't this? Doesn't it just make you feel right when you praise the Lord, you give Him thanks? Anyone else want to finish up? Yes, Brother Dunford. I could just kind of read my thankfulness. It says, I will extol thee, my God, O my King. And I will bless thy name forever and ever. Every day I will bless thee and I will praise thy name forever and ever. Amen. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. I thank God for his greatness. We think that he's, we think of the, you know, the vastness of the ocean, for instance. I feel, you know, we feel like a pin drop in that. And yet God created that. You look to the skies and you see the majesties of the heavens. And all the new universes that they're uncovering, you know, discovering. God created it and he knows them all by name. You know, our, the greatness of our God, he's greater than our troubles. He's greater than our successes. You know, God is, his greatness is unsearchable. Then it says, one generation shall praise thy works to another and shall speak and shall declare thy mighty acts. I'm, I thank God for those that are bold to share and talk about the goodness of God. That they're not intimidated by the foolishness of, of unbelief but are willing to talk to people and share them, share with them um, what we know about God, what God has revealed of himself to us. He says, I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty and of thy wondrous works. Uh, Brianna just talked about, you know, thanking God for trials. We thank God for victories. We thank God for just the many blessings he gives us. That's all the work of God, and we thank God for that. He says, the Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger, and of great mercy. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. All thy works shall praise thee, O Lord, and thy saints shall bless thee. I thank God for his mercy and his grace. Without that, we would be damned. We'd be on our way to hell because we're depraved. And only a good, loving, and gracious, mighty God could draw us from death to, to life, the life everlasting. We thank God for who he is. God, we're not worthy of you, but you're so good. And coming together in your presence to give praise, it just feels so right and so good. Thank you for condescending, for us to be made recipients of your grace and mercy for the simplicity of the gospel. Thank you for fellowship with you and with other believers. We thank you for the time of fellowship to follow now. We just thank you for this time we've had here today. God, we, we cannot offer anything better than our thanks. And so we offer it to you now. And praise your name. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Right, we're going to... Um, is there a particular order how we should do things? If you have, if you're a child and you're here, uh, you'll go with your parents. Uh, we'll just may let a line uh, be established. And uh, by the way, if you want to get a picture of the pie before it gets destroyed, uh, it might be a good opportunity. But we've got a, just a great time. This is not diet day here today, <laughs> and so th as a matter of fact, I think we had a, a, an arrangement where. Everything is zero calorie today. Uh, I don't even think it has sugar in it. So 
Uh, the fact is that it, uh, we're just going to enjoy a time of praise and fellowship. Encourage each other during the praise time. Praise the Lord to each other. And you'd be amazed at just how wonderful uh, it is to be in the presence of praising people. Ladies, is there anything, Mrs. Price? Yes, we did start the pie, so there are on, on the table some pieces of pie already there that is for taking. Um, it's not safe for somebody. Okay. And uh, we just have to be seated. No one running around, you know. Uh, I know if uh, children get their pie early, they'll probably finish right away. Please stay seated at the tables for the little kids um, to sit at, too, so it'll be easier for them to eat and have it in the lab. Everybody else, there's ta or chairs sitting around everywhere. So sit wherever you like and mingle. I feel like singing Plenty Good Pie. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> so.